Hey there, guys. I wanted to drop in real quick to talk to you about a brand new offer that I've put together just for you. It truly is going to revolutionize the way that you do business. I am offering a 90 minute strategy session that's also going to give you a visual roadmap that will guide you over the next six months to be able to accomplish any author goal you want to make happen. So here's the thing we all need some one on one guidance sometimes. And the whole idea behind this is to give you the one-on-one personalized experience that you're really craving and get you on the road to your greatest success, right? That's all we really want for you. So if you're curious about how this is going to work, head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash visual map and learn more about it today. Welcome to the Author Revolution podcast, where change is not just embraced, it's celebrated. I'm Carissa Andrews, international best-selling author, indie author coach, and your navigator through the ever-evolving landscape of authorship. Are you ready to harness the power of your mind and the latest innovations in technology for your writing journey? If you're passionate about manifesting your dreams and pioneering new writing frontiers, then you're in the perfect place. Here, we merge the mystical woo of writing with the exciting advancements of the modern world. We dive into the realms of mindset, manifestation, and the transformative magic that occurs when you believe in the impossible. We also venture into the world of futuristic technologies and strategies, preparing you for the next chapter in your author career. Every week, we explore new ways to revolutionize your writing and publishing experience. From AI to breakthrough thinking, this podcast is your gateway to a world where creativity meets innovation. Whether you're penning your first novel or expanding your literary empire, whether you're a devotee of the pen or a digital storyteller, this podcast is where your author revolution gains momentum. So join me in this journey to continue growth and transformation. It's time to redefine what it means to be an author in today's dynamic world. This is the Author Revolution Podcast, and your author revolution starts now. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of the Author Revolution podcast. I am super excited that you're here today. We are venturing into new territories right now, (laughs) and I'm going to explain to you why. The past, uh, geez, a couple of weeks now, I guess, I have been in this place of feeling like I need to go deeper into trusting my intuition. And what's come of it has been really really fascinating stuff, like almost mind-blowingly crazy, right? So I'm someone who teaches mindset. I'm someone who teaches how to transform your life using the power of your mind, how to transform your author career, how to, you know, get out of your own way, all of those things. And I realized that for a while now, (laughs) I've been keeping my own self stuck in, I guess what I would consider like my Virgo-ness like my strategic mind that just doesn't stop or whatever. And I wasn't leveraging or leaning into as much my number one relator. And I remember thinking when I first started getting into like Becca Syme and learning more about uh, how our strengths are, like the Clifton strengths, I remember looking at my number one relator thinking, are we sure though? Are we really sure? Well, so the past couple of weeks, what I found is that as I am getting quiet and getting still and doing a silent meditation. So I'm not doing any of the guided meditations when this happens. I do the guided meditations and hypnosis that we are teaching with, especially with times that I'm feeling a certain way. Like I will go to, they're my go-tos. But every day I'm putting aside and have been now specifically just to sit quietly and to tap and tune in to my intuition. And some of the crazy things that have happened (laughs) from this tune in is that I'm realizing the connections I as myself as author revolution am meant to be here for like I'm a conduit for helping others voices be heard. I'm a conduit for helping to elevate, you know, the vibe of the planet, the vibe of our community as indie authors, like we're here to level up. And so as I kind of go through this process. And every day I'm tapping and tuning in, turning on (laughs) all the things. I'm getting these wild hits of insight, these wild hits of things I should be doing. And now one of them this past week has been to 
sync up with this company called Podmatch. Like I've been typically accepting, you know, podcast requests by my listeners, like people who I should interview. Sometimes it's a friend who's like, hey, you really need to bring this person on. Or sometimes it was just myself, right, that I really wanted to interview and speak to a certain person because I was called. And now lately I've been feeling this, this urge that it needs to expand. Like our circles as indie authors are kind of tight <laughs> and we're kind of, you know, kind of floating around the same circle over and over again. How do I elevate? How do I help others elevate? How do I get messages out further? And what ended up coming to me was that I need to get some new insights, some new ways to, to reach people. And Author Helper Suite, actually, a couple of weeks ago, I don't even know when it was, like, I just happened to see it. They had an ad on their main homepage. Like, if you use Author Helper Suite, they have, like, these three little things at the top of the homepage. And it was for Podmatch, and I clicked on it. I can't remember if they were recommending it because they're using it or if they had an affiliate. I have, I literally have no idea. I just remember opening it. The tab was there. And for whatever reason, I got a wild hair up my butt <laughs> to go figure it out, like, to go look at it. The next thing I know, I'm signed up. Next thing I know, I'm signing up and doing my whole thing as a host and a profile for being a guest so that I can obviously talk about what I do on other people's podcasts. And it was just the wildest thing. And so now here I sit and I'm seeing a lot of synchronicities coming through that I'm meant to connect with and touch on people's lives in a bigger way this year. And so I have basically told the universe, told myself, my higher self, I will do whatever comes through in these meditations, no matter how uncomfortable it makes me feel. <laughs> so we're going to have a podcast episode all about this next week. Don't worry, there's, there's more coming. But so what I did was I reached out to this woman, Susan Gold, and she has just absolutely touched my heart in a way that just opened it up. And what's wild about it is that like this month for your future self, we called this inner gold. And her name, obviously, is Susan Gold. And she's taking what was a very traumatic life experience, her life as a, a child and how it looked, and she's transformed it into something beautiful. Like, right? In herself, she has transformed everything into inner gold. And so the conversation, when I was looking at, you know, people and trying to vibe with, like, who should I bring on the show? What is it I'm trying to stand for this year? What is it that I want to really touch on and how do I want to change, not necessarily the programming, but to go deeper, to go bigger? And her her profile just really stood out to me. And guys, I'm telling you, oh, all the people she has met in her life, all the stories she's about to tell you, hang on, it's a wild ride. She is incredible. It's absolutely wild. And on top of it, she's written a book, her first book, and it's called Toxic Family. And I want you to listen, especially if you've gone through hard times yourself, especially if you've had a, a family of origin that was less than appealing <laughs> and that had some you know, difficult moments. I think what you're going to hear is going to, at least if nothing else, give you a glimmer of hope that you can get over to the other side of it. You can transform it and transmute it in a way that really benefits you and you can see it from a different perspective. So without further ado, I'm going to get into it. I just wanted to share how Susan and I met and how thrilled I am to be offering some new voices on the podcast this year. So let's get into it. Let's meet Susan. Well, hi, Susan. Welcome to the Author Revolution podcast. I am really excited that you're coming on the show today. First of all, welcome. And why don't you go ahead and tell my audience just a little bit about who you are and what you do? Well, I never thought I'd be on a podcast called Author Revolution. In 2007, an Irish seer told me, you have a book to write. It's going to help a lot of people. And I shoved that under the <laughs> carpet I could find. I was like, I'm not going through all that for a PR tool. You've got to be out of your mind. And then <laughs> a pandemic hit in 2020. And I had two intuitives back to back, bring it back up. You've got a book to write. And the third intuitive said, you have three books to write. And I was like, oh. Before this turns into a fluff and library, let me get going. But it's been <laughs> a circuitous, circuitous route to this place. I grew up in a very challenging environment. I was raised by a genius astrophysicist, but he also loved to uncork the whiskey bottle at 7.30 a.m. and glug, glug, glug. And he had a little issue with womanizing and was a bit of a Peter Pan. 
And my mother had five children before she was 30. And she came from a very troubled past. Her father, my grandfather, was beaten almost to the point of death by a stepmother. And he, in turn, did the same to my mother. And so my parents were hurt and abused children, raising very hurt and abused children. And it was something that I was highly aware of. I'm, I'm what some would say a super empath. So I can immediately feel the tenor, the tone, the texture of the room, the emotions. And as a youngster and and now quite a bit in adulthood too, but I don't like to, to go there. It's very Southern California hooey. I was quite telepathic. I could read the thoughts of the adults in the room and they didn't very much like it when I would spout out exactly what they were thinking. So it was a, a very dangerous place. It had all the signs and the symptoms of a toxic family. And it also was the perfect spot for me to be raised, the middle of five kids with these two pseudo adults. And I dreamed of going to New York City and being like Barbara Walters. I would watch her on my beanbag chair, on my belly, in my basement. And I was like, I'm going to go to New York and I'm going to be like Barbara Walters. And I got to New York at 19 and I was living in Greenwich Village on my own. I negotiated an arts management internship before it was she because back then in college they wanted you to stay in line in your trout pay your tuition and pass go but I negotiated my way out and there I was in New York City and went back right after college and worked at this very glittery talent agency where they represented everybody who's a household name it was very very exciting and I wasn't making enough money, Carissa, to pay my bills. So <laughs> that I sounds familiar. A, yeah. Yeah. I took up a side hustle as an exercise trainer. And Barbara Walters became my client. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. It's been an amazing ride. You know, I'm quite a manifester, but I didn't really understand it. And Barbara would have loved you. She would have loved your listeners. She was a girl's girl. She was highly intuitive. There was a reason she was such a great journalist and celebrity interviewer. One day I rang her doorbell at 7 a.m. And she said, Susan, what is going on with you? Get in here. And within moments, she had it out of me that I had been sexually harassed in the workplace the day before. And she said, I'm coming to work with you this morning and we're going to confront this man together. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, all right. I think I got covered. So I did go to work that day and I confronted my boss and he asked me, do you have everything you need? And I kind of quizzically said, yes. And he said, great, you're fired. And I was about 90 days sober. All those red flags that I had seen in my family of origin were coming up in my early 20s in my own life. I was somebody who was very determined, very focused, very driven. I was finding myself in very seedy relationships. My friends were more and more fair weather. And it required a Walkman and sunglasses and a hat to walk around Manhattan. So I knew (laughs) something was dry. um, (laughs) Getting clean was, was the first mandate. And I was also newly out of a very abusive relationship where the man held the purse strings, I'm embarrassed to say. And Barbara wanted to know <laughs> how, how the day had gone the next time I had, I had seen her for our session. And I told her, and she said, well, you can assist my fiance, who was running a huge film distribution company at the time. Another glittering assignment, right? But I said, Barbara, I just can't. Not after what I've experienced. I can't be an assistant any longer. And I went on to match celebrities with brands. The modern art master, Andy Warhol, was the first 
person that I convinced to do a car commercial that he had no interest in doing, trust me. And that's a whole nother story. And then that led me into producing for television and film, and then eventually from New York to LA. Wow. That is an amazing like journey to get you to where you are now, right? How? It doesn't match, does it? It doesn't wow. match. It's Although amazing. It's, uh... It does though. Yeah. It, it reminds me a lot of, I have a couple of friends in my life that are like that, where it's like, they've had this big, glorious, wonderful life. And it, almost it's like, there's multiple lives in that one like lifespan. My husband's even one of those where it's like, he looks back at like all of the things he's done over the years. And you're just like, how am I here at this place now? <laughs> like what, <laughs> what just happened? Wow. Well, I don't, I don't want to get too hooey, but I've definitely been led. I mean, this photo that's in the back of me is a photo out my back slider. And it's a picture of the Canadian Rockies in a vast prairie. Montana was not even on my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe moved to central or Northern California. And here I am living in Montana. It's where I finished the book. Uh, it's where I was when it was published. And I'm absolutely in the right place and the right timeline <laughs> to move yes. Well, that is wonderful. And that's such a great segue. So let's talk about this wonderful book. You've written a book called Toxic Family, Transforming Childhood Trauma into Adult Freedom. And so obviously you gave us a little, little teaser onto like what the inception of the story was, but can you tell us more about the book? How's that for a title, huh? Right? Oh my title is Magical Illumination, Transforming Childhood Trauma into Adult Freedom. I love my family. I feel like they were perfect teachers for me, and it's taken me a long time to get to that place, but I truly believe there are no accidents, and I have so much love for them, and I didn't want to throw them under the bus, and I swear it felt like two weeks before the publishing date, and my publisher called and said, Oh, by the way, we'd like to change the title to Toxic Family. And I thought my stomach fell out of my body. I was just <laughs> oh, no. wet everywhere you could sweat. But, you know, tossing it back and forth, I realized the people that need to be reached by what this book has to say, they would respond more to Toxic Family than Magical yeah. Illumination. They might be a little disappointed, but this yeah. is personal and professional trajectory that I've experienced. It's a, it's a memoir, but people, people like to call it a self-help memoir. I guess, you know, it's a hybrid today. My, one of my first editors totally just backlash me that, oh, there's no such category as memoir self-help. Oh but my anyway, God. Then you yeah. make one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> New yeah, categories just, are made all the time. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 again, picked the patriarchal pretext, but um, I came to my senses. And then there's an appendix in the back that has really helpful tools that I garnered over the years that have really helped me transform and move through all of the experiences, the alcoholism, the addictions that are multiple, the 10-year bout with clinical depression. And then ultimately, I think the perfect storm was facing narcissistic abuse. Right, right. I can't even imagine. I, I grew up in a very loving household, so I didn't have a lot of that. I think there's definitely alcoholism throughout the family, but for the most part, you know, we've we've all been very supportive of each other, which has been great. And so listening to you know, different stories of how lives were so much more difficult. Like I have nothing to complain about when I listen to, you know, stories of triumph and of trauma and toxic families and like how people can overcome and get to a point where you are obviously where you still can house love and appreciation for the fact that you were in that position. And I think it, it obviously speaks to your broader understanding, your higher consciousness understanding of we get what we need in order to evolve in the way that we want to evolve, right? So like maybe we don't understand it as we come in here. And so we don't realize that we kind of asked for this type of situation in way, one way, shape or form, but it allowed us to blossom and bloom into the person that we ultimately needed to become. And then being able to look back and be like, I, they were perfect. This was the perfect setting for me, even though it was hard at the time. That's, that's wonderful. What a great lesson. Wow. It's, it's been quite a journey, <laughs> right? 
I didn't start out in that place, but I think Marianne Williamson might have been the first teacher in the 80s. She used to speak on the Upper West Side. I lived in Manhattan after college, I think I mentioned. And she would bunk at my friend Tara's apartment, which was right down the street from this church. And then she'd give these lectures, you know, like once a month. And she told us a story one night about coming in from the airport and having this cab driver that was absolutely vicious, like bombastic and nasty and, you know, just really awful. And honestly, I couldn't wait to get out of that cab as she was telling us this story. So she arrives at Tara's place. She opens the cab door and instead of slamming it shut, she tips this guy double. And she said, you have to understand when people are in that state, they are screaming for love. And that was the first seed that was really planted to turn my belief system around. Wow. That just gave me goosebumps. I love that. I love stories like that so much. That is awesome. And Marianne Williamson is so like profound. She's so wonderful too herself. That's how cool is it that you were in those circles? Like, isn't that, do you ever look back and just go, wow. Like <laughs> it's, it's rather interesting, you know, a little small town girl from central Pennsylvania ends up hosting Steven Spielberg around the lot and <laughs> ripping out Vince Vaughn's clothes and putting George Clooney's in the trailer and, you know, how, convincing Taylor Swift she needs to be interviewed by cartoon characters. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> I love that. The trajectory. And it's I... been really fun, but ultimately it's not been my purpose. Yeah. It's just been great. Well, it's not even stories really. It's about the experiences of those people and what they could teach you. Right. That's so Mo awesome. Mostly that they put their pants legs on one at a time, but they have that's to That's true too. Public. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Can't unsee that, but all right, that's fine. <laughs> So what was the journey or the experience like of then, okay, you, you've you got this mission, you know, you're going to have to write a book and you're like, okay, I am, huh? Um, my, my close friend, Tammy Tyree, she's the hypnotist that's in my programs. She had kind of a similar situation where she was told basically in a, a channeled message, she had a book to write. And so it's like, what was that experience like for you? And how, how did the publishing game go for you? Yeah. So I, I didn't really want to do it. But then when I was told that I had three books to write, I thought, okay, I got to squirm out of this somehow. I'll just start this. And I started <laughs> it like any TV producer would have. I helped launch Fox News Channel and we'd come in the morning at seven and one of the supervisors would give us, you know, our assignment. You have to come up with this topic and you have to have two points of view and multi-ethnicities multi and you go live at 4 p.m. So I was used to like taking tasks and making it happen no matter what. And that's the way that I approached this manuscript. And it did give me a first pass within nine months. But what it didn't give me, Carissa, and I think this is so important, is a connection to the material. Oh, sure. It was okay. another automation. It was another, it, you know, exercise to create and complete. And a really wise mentor said to me, and everybody listen, two for <laughs> one. Um, she said to me, go back through it and take another pass from little Susie's point of view. That little beautiful light inside your heart, that piece of your soul that's on this journey with you and just see what happens. Oh my gosh, it wasn't so much that the black and white words of the page changed, but my connection to my story and my journey and my purpose did. Wow, that is so awesome. So you were able to, it's interesting, and I hope people did listen to that because it is interesting when you're writing a story and you're going through them, especially when you've been in this gig for a long time. Like for me, I've written almost 30 books at this point. And you get to a point where you're like, am I even connecting to the story anymore? Am I even connecting with what I'm trying to talk about? And so when you go back through those edits and you you look at it again, you can tell where you kind of like were in and out and where you're kind of like you're half-assing it or whatever. And then you, where you came back in, you were focused again. 
And so then having that opportunity to look at it with those fresh eyes and really using a different lens or coming at it from that higher vibrational place or, a, you know, whatever, how, however you want to describe it, it can be so powerful of a tool to be able to make it even better, to make that manuscript, that story, you know, even better. And wow, what, a, what an interesting thing to have happen. So as you went through then and altered things, obviously it, it came out as it is now, was it easy for you to get published? Did you indie publish or did you self publish or did you um, trad publish? How did you go about that process? Yeah. So I knew I didn't have the chops to really get it together enough to self publish. And I so admire those that, that are able, I had an amazing producing partner in LA and she has a platform where she creates experts. So she brands people as experts. And part of that branding was a publishing label. And she became a New York Times bestselling publisher. Wow. So one day that intuitive voice was like, send the manuscript to Jackie, send the man. And I was like, shut up. I can't, I can't get it to Jackie. <laughs> you know, she's a New York Times bestselling publisher. So I sent it to her on a Friday afternoon. And she texted me Monday morning. And she said, I read your book in one sitting and I want to publish it. And I almost started crying. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. How wonderful yeah. is that? See, it's like yeah. all these little connections that sometimes you don't even realize how powerful they are. I mean, how long did, had you known this this publisher? I knew her for a really long time, like like a couple of decades probably. And again, her name is Jackie Jordan. Just Google her. She's all over. Okay. She's extraordinary. She's amazing. Reach out to her. Yeah, she's she's quite an individual woman and power of force. Wow. Isn't that amazing though? I mean, to, a few decades before you even knew you were going to write this book and you were already connected to the person that was going to help. I, I think I want my audience to hear that. I just released a, a podcast episode about how your perfect author career is already in existence. It's already out there. And it's like, if we just allow that in, look at how the synchronicities unfold and how they come together and how it like everything can be easy when you let it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's so wild. I love that so much. I'm cool. so grateful that you talk about that topic with your listeners because it's imperative. It's not what is endemic in our systems, in any of the systems, in the education system, in most of our family systems, not all, obviously, even in our healthcare system. But that coming from that place is coming from the heart. Yeah. And I was taught to be up in my head. Right. But as soon as I started to learn, I mean, I had to reprogram myself, like sit down at my computer and type away because I really wanted to, because it might be fun. I'm like, when that suggestion was made, I'm like, are you kidding me? It's fun about this. I've got to get this done. You know, this is exciting. <laughs> But when you come from that place, there is so much magic and so much serendipity. And also the path that's already before you, that yellow brick road, you know, it just comes in one piece at a time if you're willing to, to be open yes. and listen to that part instead of what's going on upstairs. And then ultimately it's that figure eight of infinity, you know, bringing them both together, heart and mind so beautifully. Yes, absolutely. I love that. I think that's so, it is such a good lesson for people to understand and try to process through because like you said, we don't, especially people who are creative, I think we think for a while, we think that it's all in our head, like the the creativity, the sparks of intuition, it's all in our minds, but it's really not. It's it's that whole body aspect. It's everything coming together, but mind, body, soul, intuition, whatever you want to call it, it's all coming together for the greater good. And so when we can trust that and stop trying to force things, <laughs> it all well, comes and together. also devil's advocate to that end to really love yourself and be gentle when you do force it and you do yeah. come to it because that is the programming and that is what we are dropping a right. minute at a time. And that's another reason, you know, I wrote this book and published it. I love that. Well, for, uh, we were talking before the podcast uh, started too, that there's definitely authors in my community who have had traumatic events in their past 
who have issues that they're trying to overcome themselves. So I know that you're obviously someone who understands this from a very deep perspective. So how could they use the, you know, create transformation, I guess, from the trauma that they've endured in their life so that they can move on and really embrace the, the destiny that's waiting for them? Well, now it's it's a very clear map for me, but it was a bit like Sherlock Holmes when I was moving through it. So first, I'd like to say to those listeners, you are in such angelic hands. And it's so lovely that you have an awareness of your trauma. For a lot of us, it's completely blacked out. It's amnesia mm -hmm. everywhere. So that's the first blessing that you have this knowing and then next to understand that it's for purpose. I mean, certainly next time I come in, I'm going to read the fine print a little more clearly before I agree <laughs> to what I signed up for. But <laughs> just if you could lift that boulder and move through the muck and see the gold, which is not fool's gold under that boulder that's waiting for you. And trust me, I know it's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart, but it is true. And if you can see the trauma through that lens, and ultimately, I'm not saying it's in this moment, but ultimately down the road, have compassion for those that inflicted it upon you. Because God forbid you're having to inhabit the meat suit they do. My goodness, that's rough stuff. Right. So that's how I found the compassion in my heart to move through the trauma and then to let it go. I mean, I had a serious divorce from an alleged narcissist that was not pretty. And I call him my greatest guru as a teacher. I think it's chapter 12 in the book. And I remember reading through the book before, you know, the last, before it goes to print, you know, you got the galley, you're sweating bullets. God forbid you miss a typo somewhere. <laughs> yes. I read chapter 12 and I, I remember closing the book and the thought went through my mind. Oh my God, that woman is strong. And then I realized, oh, that woman is you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but these, so cool. these, yeah, these traumas can transform into absolutely priceless gifts. And it's not easy to dissect, but it is possible. Absolutely. I think there's always, there's always beauty on the other side of it. There's always, you know, regardless of what happens, even when there's a challenge in it, there's a way to perceive it differently that can make you feel better. And I think that's our ultimate goal as human beings, not just writers, obviously, but to find find those moments when the contrast is so, so deep that you can still find peace in the moment or still find peace in yourself or, you know, it just, I think th those moments of resilience just fascinate me endlessly. It's so wonderful to kind of like just think about and not necessarily want to be in those situations, but to understand like that, the power that we have to overcome anything honestly. So it's, it's awesome. Okay. So I know that you have a belief very similar to mine in interconnectedness and the power of healing through being authentically yourself. Do you want to explain a little bit about how that came about and how you use it in your daily life? That's the school of hard knocks. I mean, I always stood out like a sore thumb from, you know, kindergarten on, I remember when they came to me and told me, you have to start writing with your other hand. I wrote with my left hand. And it's like, it was me and Bonnie Hunt at the table and Bonnie, <laughs> you know, put the pencil in the right hand and started writing. And I was like, no way I'm sticking with my left hand. And I'm still a lefty as far as like, you know, signing my signature. I don't know what the point of, of that was. Cause I totally lost the train of thought, but it did have <laughs> To the question. It's interconnected to something and being authentically yourself, right? Well, being authentically well, you with your left-handedness. Yes. And, yeah. and also to accept it. I mean, I vibrate at a different level. I just do. I did not fit in a corporate system. I could not figure it out the two times I tried it once at ICM and once at Fox. I just don't fit. And I had to surrender to it. And most people think 
you know, that know me, they're stunned that I put this book out. They're proud of my power and what I've lived through and transformed. But why would you hang your dirty laundry out for everyone to see? <laughs> and I just feel like, you know, that dirty laundry is like smelling pretty good and it's going to help with transformation, even if it's just mm -hmm. one and it's been many more than one since, right. since I've done it. So I've always been the outsider. I've always been one who sees it differently. I'm the one who speaks up at those meetings when everybody else is just silent and trying to <laughs> appear invisible. <laughs> I love that. Oh, too cute. Yeah, it's interesting when when you're kind of coming at uh, things from a different angle, even though, you know, it's almost like being the black sheep of the family or being the black sheep in your social circle or high school or whatever. But there's just something about you that you know you have to trust and follow with and it's going to lead you someplace and you don't quite know what it is. But that's the exciting part because now all of a sudden you're exploring and you're challenging yourself and you're doing some of the things that maybe others are scared to even try to do. I, I, I think that's really cool. I know that's definitely how I try to look at my reality and what I get to do. And it's something that I'm in the process of kind of transitioning more over where I'm consciously, actively, truly believing that no matter what happens, I feel I'm supported, right? And I think authors need a little bit of that too, because we kind of get into this, especially indie authors, and a lot of my audience is indie authors, but we get into this place of uh, like fear-based, is this ever going to work for me? Why isn't this working for me? Or, you know, people don't pay indie authors, whatever it is. And so we get into this fear-based reality where we can't quite break from it. And so if we can start telling ourselves those different stories of how connected we are, how it all comes to us at the right moment, how we can, you know, trust our emotional guidance system or any of those things, it, it, I think it's going to make our lives so much more interesting and fun and challenging, but in a good way, right? So you've obviously talked a, a couple of times about intuition. Do you have any moments specifically for yourself, like even recently or whenever, that you've allowed your intuition to really lead you forward? Oh my gosh. Well, of course, I can remember all of the times that I did not let <laughs> intuition lead me. I, I kind of understand that one too. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's almost become to the place where I can't not because the voice is so clear. I think as the energies are shifting on our planet and I see this as a remarkable time, it this is. chaotic place is actually turning into something absolutely magnificent for us. And it will be easier for all of us to believe in our value and our worth and believe in our manifestation ability and believe what we're producing right. has merit just for being what it is. So I think the most recent intuitive moment, I was looking into different types of long-term life insurance and the financial guy like gave me a stock tip, right? He's like, you gotta buy it. And then he texted me two days later and it had gone up like $200. But my intuition was like, yeah, no, don't buy that. No, nope. it was so clear. And I had to just resist, even though I saw it go up for some reason, I'm not supposed to buy that stock. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, and then you trust that and you keep moving on and see what happens. I, I love that. And it, it, it's so interesting how it can be something as simple as that, like a, a, a nudge from that particular thing. It could be I shouldn't have this next cup of coffee. Maybe I'll get too jittery. I don't know. Or like, you know, I, I've, I've said I'm going to put my audio book out on X day and you're feeling like you're just not in the vibe of it. It's like there's there's always these little things that come up and you have to kind of lock in to where is it coming from? Is it fear based or is it intuition based? And, you know, based off of how you feel, like, does it make you feel better to trust it? you know, or does it make you feel more in fear? And so that's how you can kind of distinguish and differentiate. I think for those of you out there who haven't really kind of moved through your intuition muscle quite yet. <laughs> so do you meditate? I do. I started meditating probably in my late twenties and I had gone on a lot of like 10 day week long, silent meditation sits. 
And what happened to me was I would get crystal clear and I would get my telepathic ability back. Like I got out of one retreat and went to the grocery store and could hear the chatter of the checkers, you know, mind as I was checking out and it really freaked me out. So, you know, I've come and gone with meditation. I was very structured for quite some time. And now I'm finding I'm back to sitting on the cushion again for, I don't know, 10 or 20 minutes. I'm not very judgmental, but I see that I, that I live in meditation. You know, I used to swim. I was a master swimmer and I would watch the black line. That's meditation. I walk my dog around the prairie. That's meditation. You know, I'm chopping vegetables for the vegetarian chili and that's an opportunity for med meditation. So, you know, I feel like we got some funky programming of fun right? meditation too. <laughs> yes. Yes. I totally agree with you. I mean, it's, when you think about it, it's why it's so soothing to watch a fire or why it's so soothing to watch the waves. It's because you allow yourself to shut down the chatter of your mind. And that's all meditation is shutting down the chatter of your mind so that you can allow that space of nothing to kind of allow in what's trying to come through versus all the thoughts you're trying to force to have happen, right? Well, it's, I'm, it's, kind of, I'm kind of giggling with you, Carissa, because my mind's pretty chattery. <laughs> <laughs> my mind is too. My mind is too. But it is so nice to do the meditations and it, it it naturally raises your vibration. And I think that's part of the reason why Tammy and I created the Your Future Self program so that we can do all of the, the you know, getting out of our own way, first of all, because we have, you know, hurdles of jumping over, like, what meditation should I do today? Or what hypnosis should I do today? Or what kind of, how do I get into a system? And so we created this thing where it's four weeks of alternating either a hypnosis or a meditation based off of who's doing what. And then it has a theme. And it, interestingly enough, our theme for March is inner gold and your last name is gold. So I thought it was so funny. I'm like, perfect timing. This is just the universe bringing you right in right now. <laughs> it just makes so much sense. And it just, at least it's that intuition thing, you know, where you get that like rush of like, this was meant to be, this was totally meant to be. So totally. I, is that through your website? Because I want to know more. Is Yeah. It, like, yep. Yep. So people who are interested in getting into the program, it's on authorrevolution.org. And so you can go to like courses and memberships. There's a, like a little link at the bot at the top and then go find it. It's right. At, the, the memberships are actually right at the top. So your future self is right there. And so every month we're putting in a new like mind magic workout for your future self. And each one has its own theme. And so last month was love it up for February and this month is inner gold. And so I had to like tap into some sort of like leprechaun -y vibe. That was my, that was my intuition nudging me there. So that's what I did. <laughs> I love that you manifested it. I love that you took the time that it takes to produce those kinds of tools and that you have it so readily available and I'm going to check it out. Oh, heck yes. Well, and it's fun too. I was, it, it was very similar to your book situation where we were doing meditations and hypnosis for some of the courses that we do, but I had a student, she knows who she is. She's wonderful. Um, who was like, oh, I really wish that we had like a, a schedule, like all of these meditations and things are great, but I wish I had a schedule to keep me on track. And so we had played around with the concept of it for like six months. I'm so sorry, Heather. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Heather, <laughs> that it took me that long. But now that we've got it going, um, it's it's been so much fun to put it together and have everything organized. It's been it's been great. And I'm so glad that she, number one, suggested it or kind of, she didn't even suggest we do it. It was more just like that intuition of her. I wish I had this thing. And then me going, oh, I could do that. <laughs> like, Yeah. So it's been, it's been so much fun. It's probably one of my most favorite things that we were creating right now for Author Revolution. So, okay, well, we're obviously on the same vibe. We, we have a very similar viewpoint of things. Is there anything else that you want my audience to know about you or about your wonderful memoir and story that is going on in Toxic Family? Well, I'm relating to what you're doing with Author Re Revolution, and I too got the messaging. So I just created a little mini course where people can take it and really explore the signs of a toxic family, the remnants that it leaves mm. you to work with, and some tools. So if you want to check that out, you can go to susangold.us, but just send me an email, info at susangold.us, and I'll give you the password to Ooh. the course so you don't even have to pay for it and yeah the book, 
yeah, the book, check it out. It's on, it's in all the right places, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, but the website has everything, susangold.us. And there's even a free conversation if you want to have a chat. That's wonderful. And I will definitely have everything in our show notes as well. So if you want to check that out, head over to authorrevolution.org and it will be located in there. I believe the episode is 225. So authorrevolution.org forward slash 225. 225, that takes a lot of effort and time and production and preparation and finance. And here you are, bravo. Brava to you, to your partner, and to your listeners. Thank you. They are wonderful. And thank you so much for being here today because they got to listen to you and your wonderful story. And I hope you all check out her book, Toxic Family. It's going to be very helpful and instrumental to those of you who are really suffering or trying to get over that trauma, that trauma, and try to transform into something more powerful. Thank you, Susan. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Guys, wasn't that amazing? All the people Susan has met and experienced and talked to throughout her life on top of like having this past that just has really set a foundation for personal transformation and growth and learning how to tap into your intuition and trust that whatever's coming through, you can truly overcome. Like to me, her story has just been... uh, If I had to put it into a phrase, it's truly the power of transformation. And I I think what really resonates about that with me is that I love the idea of transformation. When I've done like branding quizzes and things like that, it's always been the part of me that I love. It's probably the maximizer, come to think of it, strength. And I just love seeing and hearing people who can overcome really, really big challenges, right? And get over onto the other side and feel like they have control of their lives and that our perspectives and our perception, especially when it doesn't serve us, can be rewired. Because that, like, there's nothing worse than having a really toxic family, right? And having a situation where you feel really negated or trapped or hurt or all of those things and being able to grow, evolve, and write a new story. And as authors, you know, sometimes we have to go through some of these darker experiences so that we have a broader depth of knowledge that we can bring to our stories and the way that we write and the characters we create. It's not always the funnest part of the job, but it does help us to create a deeper, more meaningful story that readers resonate with. And I just, I find it endlessly fascinating. It's, it's so wonderful and wild and interesting to meet people who have had the capabilities to just overcome. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode as much as I did creating it. I hope you enjoy Susan. I will make sure that in today's show notes, which in fact is 225, (laughs) it's authorrevolution.org forward slash 225. You can get the transcript there, the links over to Susan's mini course, and I will include her email because she did say email her and she can give you the password and code to be able to get in without paying if you'd like to do it that way. And of course, we'll have links to her book as well. So check her out, learn more about her story, and maybe it'll motivate you to expand, to transform, to trust your intuition a little bit more. All right, guys, have a wonderful rest of the week. Take this story and let it transform you. And of course, go forth and start your author revolution. Okay, indie author, Carissa Andrews with Author Revolution here. We need to have a chat. I know you want to build a sustainable long-term author career, but you can't do it just by wishing for it. It would be nice, yes, but alas, you gotta do the work. By that I mean you need to reframe the way you look at your author business so that you can write and publish more frequently. With Rapid Release Roadmap, my signature online course, 
I'll help you learn not only how to make writing and publishing four books a year seem easy, but I'll help you master your prolific author mindset so that you can clear away all the negative self-talk that's holding you back. Trust me, I have been there. To learn more about Rapid Release Roadmap, head over to rapidreleaseroadmap.com. Over there, I'll give you all the insights on what you'll find inside the course. Plus, I walk you through all of the bonuses you're going to get based on the payment option you choose. And yes, there are some good ones in there, even if I say so myself. Once again, head over to rapidreleaseroadmap.com to learn more and sign up today.